Good afternoon, District 200. Welcome to Live in Your Community Schools. Thank you for joining us. My name is Erica Layakno. I'm the Director of Communications here in District 200. This show was developed to give you, our community members, a live look into our classrooms. Our learning environments are changing, and this show is one way we can give you, our community, a front seat view into our classrooms. Today, we're gonna be visiting with Franklin Middle School and we're gonna see, uh, we're gonna visit with uh, design and modeling and digital literacy. So before we get started, I wanna set a little bit of context before we jump into our classrooms. The future is uncertain and our learning environments adapt. This quote by Philip Stevens tells us that what's certain is that the world is changing faster than any time in human history. In turn, our learning environments need to evolve. The rate of change is exponential and we have to prepare our students for a world we can't predict and for jobs that don't exist. Students in our schools are in Generation Z. Gen Z is characterized by being independent, curious, driven, emotionally intelligent, globally competent, diverse, passionate, mature, and they take an active role in their futures. Gen Z has lived their entire lives with instant access to mountains of information. As a result, classroom change has happened. Today, we're gonna to learn more about how we are uniquely updating our science curriculum and offering some non-traditional courses. Science a high quality science education means that students will develop an in-depth understanding of science content and develop skills like communication, collaboration, inquiry, problem solving, and flexibility that will serve them throughout their educational and professional lives and beyond. For the past few years, we've been impl implementing science curriculum through Project Lead the Way. We believe all students should have access to real world learning experiences that allow them to gain the skills they need to thrive in college, career, and beyond. And through PLTW, students develop in-demand transportable skills. To show you firsthand what students are doing in a Project Lead the Way class, we are going to welcome uh, Mrs. Hoffmeyer's design and modeling uh, classroom at Franklin Middle School in to show you a little bit more about what students are learning in Project Lead the Way. So let me just get Mrs. Hoffmeyer at it. Welcome, Mrs. Hoffmeyer. Hi, Erica. Welcome. Thanks for having us. I know the class would like to say hi to you and everybody out there. Hi. 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 Welcome, students. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, so Mrs. Hoffmeyer, can you tell us why it is important to offer this type of a learning experience for our students? Yeah, this type of learning experience really empowers students to use in-demand skills in a real-world situation. Uh, students not just learn technical uh, types of skills, but they also learn how to problem solve, think critically and creatively, collaborate and communicate. Uh, these types of skills are very necessary for their future uh, to be able to be successful in an evolving world. There's many different ways to approach problems in this classroom and many different types of solutions. I feel like one of the biggest pieces that they take away from this class um, is to be able to handle group situations with the frustrations and the disagreements that they might actually encounter even in the real world. So can you tell me a little bit more about design and modeling and what students do in that class? Yeah, in design and modeling, we use the design process. And at the very beginning of the quarter, the students create an AFO, which is an ankle foot orthosis, for a child who has cerebral palsy. They also learn different types of sketching and modeling techniques uh, that they can use in later projects. And then they're asked to use everything that they learn through the units to be able to be challenged in creating a toy uh, for a child who has cerebral palsy where the occupational therapist can work with them. Excellent. So I believe you have some students that are going to talk to us a little bit today about their projects and what they learned from that experience. Yes, I do. Thank you. I have uh, Eva and Jana here to share their toy with you through our last project, the therapeutic toy. Oh, 
Welcome, Gianna. Welcome, Eva. Thank you for joining us today. Hi. Um, so we need a toy for children with CP, and uh, it's a fun toy that they can use during therapy. And so it's the age range of the children that can play with this is three to five years old. And it's made especially for kids with CP, but any child can use it to play with to play with it if in the age of in the age range. So it's a, this is a prototype, and it's based on a reward system. And purpose can reward a child with something that they find very fun. So how you would use it is you would demonstrate you have the top here, and you have a switch here, and a lever here. So when you would, for example, pull the lever, the top opens, and you can reach in and grab. We made it accessible for children with cerebral palsy by making it colorful and appealing to the eye. We made it portable so that it can be moved from so that it can be moved from place to place easily and without any trouble. We also wrapped it in wrapping paper so that it didn't have any sharp and jagged edges that could cut the child. This toy helps us helps children work on their fine and gross motor skills by um, using the switch for fine motor skills and the candle as well for fine motor skills and picking it up demonstrates gross motor skills. This um, handle here demonstrates opening a refrigerator door or, pu or pulling, um, riding a bicycle or pushing something that you might need. This switch also represents um, flipping a light switch and it could really help the child develop the skills needed um, for later in life. It helps the um, motor skills in particular is hand-eye coordination, reaching down through the hole to grab the reward, making sure your hand knows where to go, and your pincer grip in grabbing the small reward and picking it up, and the spherical grip in grabbing something that's a little rounder and not just some like a wrap, not just like a flat. Um, I am so impressed with how well thought out all aspects of this project. You spent a lot of time really thinking about who you were designing this for and their, the needs that, that that person, that child has. Can you tell me, what did you learn from this entire experience? Um, I personally learned how to relate to children with cerebral palsy and use empathy to really put myself in their shoes and discover what it's like to live without um, the ability to do simple tasks that we take for granted. And then I also learned about empathy, that, but also the more physical as well as working with another person to collaborate and try to build something to a limited amount of time and working fast and efficiently and also just thinking about how we can build something using an engineer mindset to think about like the example of the this here, how to pull it up and then the top will open. And That's so that. Thank you so much, students. And Mrs. Hoffmeyer, can I ask you one additional question? Yeah, and I actually, Erica, I also had something I wanted to add. Um, this is just one of two pre-engineering courses that Franklin has to offer through PLTW, which as you mentioned, is Project Lead the Way. The other class is Automation and Robotics that's offered to eighth graders. And I also teach entrepreneurship. I have a very large space, large classroom for students to be able to research, create, collaborate, test, and build. And you see behind me where the students are sitting, they're at the workstations at the computers, where they do a lot of their research and they're creating, especially if they choose to use 3D modeling software, such an inventor. Um, and the back of the room is where you're going to see more of the maker spaces. And you'll see displayed some other students' therapeutic toys and some boards from my entrepreneurship class with their business plans. And we also use the VEX equipment for automation and robotics. So I just wanted to add that little piece um, in there. So everybody knows this whole room does have an array of lots of events happening throughout the day. 
Thank you, and I apologize. I had the next teacher's name up on the screen while you were just now talking. So this is Michelle Hoffmeyer. She's a teacher at Franklin. And what I think is so unique about your room is that because of the layout and because of the size, you are able to um, have space for students to be physical and move and have um, usable space where engineer these projects, but then you also on the other side of the room have the computers and the technology that's associated with a lot of the, the projects that they're working on. So thank you so much for giving us a glimpse into your classroom today. And I'm sure that the students want to say hello, hi, and bye to their parents. They sure do. Bye. 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 Thank you very much for having us. Thank you, Jana. Thank you, Eva. And welcome back. And now we're actually going to add Mrs. Hammer into the broadcast. Uh, Mrs. Hammer is a seventh grade teacher at Franklin Middle School. She teaches design, uh, I'm sorry, digital literacy. Um, and students just finished up a unit in digital citizenship. And so Mrs. Hammer is gonna tell us more about that. Welcome to the show, Mrs. Hammer. Hi, Erica. Thanks so much for having us. So before we get started in talking about your digital citizenship class uh, unit that your students just completed, can I'm looking in your room and I see a lot of colors. I see a really interesting layout. Can you talk to me about your classroom and how you? Uh, sure, yeah. When I uh, moved into this classroom, I wanted to make sure that I made it conducive to 21st century learning. So the first thing I did was I, uh, convinced my husband to build me some tables. So you see these orange peninsulas behind me. Um, he built me six stations where the kids collaborate. Um, and that's where most of the kids are sitting now. Um, I was also very fortunate. I was awarded a Student Excellence Foundation grant that allowed me to also equip each of the collaboration stations with a large screen monitor and a wireless keyboard and a wireless mouse. And this was perfect because in a 21st century learning environment, you really need to be able to, the students need to be able to collaborate and they need to be able to create and communicate. And so these, each of these peninsulas and collaboration stations work, are working perfectly for that. Um, and then the other thing that I did was I just kind of spent some time at garage sales, scrounging up some furniture I could repurpose uh, for the classroom. And this, it was important just to have stuff be flexible and lightweight so it could be moved around easily and repurposed throughout the year for whatever we needed it for. Um, I also, oh, go ahead. Why is, why are your furniture choices, why is classroom furniture so important it, to the student learning um, experience? Okay, yeah, it, it's important because when the kids come into this classroom, they, there's no assigned seat, there's, um, I don't tell them where, where to sit or who they sit with, so they get a lot of opportunity for student voice and choice. And that's really important in education today because there's a lot of research out there that shows that students, when they're given opportunities to choose and make choices and have their voice be heard, that they buy into what they're doing in the classroom a lot more. They're more engaged, they work harder, and it has proven to be very true in this classroom as well. Um, it also, the, only, the other benefit is it gives them an opportunity to practice some important SEL skills that we really uh, believe in here at, at Franklin. And that is they can work on their self-awareness because they need to be aware of where they're going to work best. They can't just come in and sit with friends. They really need to think about, okay, where am I going to get the most accomplished? Where's going to be the best place to be based on what I can do today? Um, Wonderful. So uh, today we're going to hear from some of your students who just finished up their unit on digital citizenship. And um, they were asked to select a topic and create a public service announcement uh, about that topic they selected. And I think we're gonna hear that public service announcement today. We're joined by Clara, Anya, Maddie, and Ava. Welcome to the show, Franklin students. Hi, so you're gonna show us or tell us about your public service announcement and the topic that you selected, correct? So remember, I need you to talk up nice and loud so that everybody watching at home can hear you, okay? Okay. All right, so go ahead and start your video. We're ready whenever you are. 
Mrs. Hammer, can you make it, can you put, put the machine just a little bit closer? Thank you. One in five teens admit to feeling worse about their own life as a result of what they see on social media. Well, that sounds so awkward. I'll to my news now. So our, uh, we are not hearing that audio. So I'm wondering if maybe we can, ladies, I'm going to put you on the spot and you spent a bunch of time preparing this public service announcement. Can you walk me through what are some of the key messages that you mentioned in your public service announcement? Um, some key messages that were part of it was speak up a bit more. Okay, um, that you have to be very aware that you don't have to care as much about what you're doing on social media. Like you, just because you don't get a lot of likes doesn't mean that you aren't liked. Also, to that, like some of the other students, would you like to share with us what uh, a little bit more about your public service announcement about how social media affects teens? I didn't realize that so many people care so much about their image on social media. I learned that you can rely on social media, or that you can't rely on social media to tell you what you're worth, and you need to be self-aware and not think that you are less of a person because you don't get many likes. I learned the importance of self-management and how important it is to be cautious about how much time you spend. We have some impressive students in District 200 and we, de we heard from some very impressive students at Franklin Middle School today. Clara, Anya, Maddie, and Ava, thank you. I'm sorry we weren't able to fully hear your PSA, but the, from the video that we saw in the background, I can tell you spent a lot in that together. So thank you for trying to share that with us today. Mrs. Hammer, before we go, can you just give me in maybe one to two sentence, uh, talk to me about what you cover in digital literacy. Sure. Digital literacy is a class about uh, teaching these kids to be safe online and responsible students when they're using the internet, um, responsible in you know making sure they're ethical about what information they take from from the internet and um, images and you know videos and, and audio and all of that and teaching them what's appropriate for, what's okay for them to use and things and what's not okay. Um, they also we also talk a lot about digital footprints and how everything that you do online is there forever. And so we're just trying to make them aware, self-aware of what's uh, what can happen based on what they do online and that it's kind of a permanent thing. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm sure the students in your room want to wave hello to their parents. Hi. Hi. Wonderful. Well, thank you for your time today and we will see you uh, around here soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Well, that's it for today's episode of Live in Your Community Schools. I hope that you were able to see today that uh, our classrooms have changed and they continue to evolve uh, as we prepare students for that future that we really cannot predict. But what I hope that you take away from this today is that our courses are relevant, they are research-based, and that our teachers are being very intentional with uh, what they're teaching our students and the skills that they're intending to develop in them. So thank you so much for joining us today for Live in Your Community Schools. Uh, join us hopefully later this month. We'd love to get a couple more episodes in before the school year is up. It is hard to believe it is April and the school year is almost over, uh, but hopefully you'll join us again for another episode of Live in Your Community Schools. Have a great day.